What grade are you going to give yourself? Well, I, we don't give ourselves a grade. We get somebody on the outside to do it, and they gave us eight and a half out of ten, <laughs> uh, which is one of our better years. We've averaged 74 percent over the long term. We obviously got a few things wrong, like we do every year. We never know going into the year what we're going to get right and what we're going to get wrong, but we hope we got more than half. So right. why don't we call <clears> out the thing, the, the biggest thing you think you got right, and the biggest thing you think you got wrong? So the most out, out of consensus forecast that came true was above three percent real GDP. A year ago, people were talking about two, maybe a little bit better. We got lots of calls when we said 3% real, 5% nominal. What did we get wrong? We thought stocks would be bonds, <laughs> which looked great for about 360 days of the year, and then poof, and that disappeared. And of course, who would have guessed the cash would be the best performer last year? Okay, so let's talk about 2019. <clears throat> what's, the, what's the big out of consensus prediction? Our biggest concern uh, that seems to have evaporated from the market is that inflation is not dead. I hear a lot of people say, there is no inflation, there isn't going to be for a long time. Mr. Well, Ron tell Halsey. me why wage rates, average hourly earnings, went from 2.6 to 3.2 in six months. If that goes like that for another six months, we're knocking on four, and when we knock on four, the Fed has to start reversing this more dovish stance they've taken. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm most worried about, and an otherwise forecast that's reasonably sanguine. You know, Bob, it was the participation rate that threw so many people off. With Wasn't this it beautiful? Last, yeah, with this last uh, the report from, from the Labor Department on jobs. I, I guess that's the type of thing. If participation rate increases, that would hold off. Or no question. To the extent we can bring people back in, women most particularly is what we saw this past month. You get 300,000 new jobs and the unemployment rate goes up and the participation rate does what it does. That's an amazing report. And then you know about technology we have no idea how the internet still filters through everything and, and, and you know holding down prices and everything else it is what's kept the oil revolution uh, in, in the uh, in the United States as well globalization the oil boom that is the uh, the president is tweeting we should, uh, we should, we should show you that about right interest now. rates yeah here we go economic numbers looking really good capital with the really uh, can we can you imagine if I have long-term zero interest rates to play with like the past administration rather than the rapidly raised normalized rates we have today <coughs> that would have been so easy still markets up big since 2016 election your thoughts <laughs> You can tweet them back. Can yeah, you can tweet, tweet them back. This can be your reply. Uh, so, so, hey, look, interest rates <clears throat> aren't going to be zero forever. The fact that we had zero rates for so long means somebody, some bodies, were able to borrow money that probably shouldn't have been able to borrow that money. Right. Does that set up a problem somewhere down the line? My guess is yes, when and who exactly, we can all speculate about that. But uh, that, that was an experiment that uh, went on too long, in my view. Okay, so where, where's the, this year end? Equities. We have a 2650, 2750 target. It was up to 8, eight to 12 percent for the year, up 15 to 20 total return from the low a week prior to December 31st. What was your target last year? That's below your target last yeah, year. Yeah, our target was 2700 last year. We got it wrong. Hmm. Uh, we were at the lower end of forecasters last year, but clearly we weren't low, low enough. What I find interesting is that um, slowdown has become the bull case, right? So if you went back a year ago, Bob, when you were making it, you know, acceleration was, was the bull case. Slowdown was, uh-oh, this is just a sugar high. So now prices have come to a level where we can deal with a slowdown. We just don't want to tip into uh, deflation or disinflation uh, too deeply and, and, you know, negative growth. So that's the interesting part where we're at right now. We won Goldilocks again. We won Goldilocks again. The market go up again. to your target yes. and still be down a lot from the highs. So yes. that's, that's the zone we're occupying. That, that's one of our predictions this year. Stocks are up this year, but we fail to make a new high for the first time in 10 years. I, I don't think we see 2950. That's a big I mean, run. That, that, that jobs number Friday was Goldilocks, though. And, and it, I understand what you're saying about inflation, but this is it sounds like a Phillips curve inflation that, that you're going with there. There's really nothing evident yet. You're just no assuming question. that. And plus, you know, we've had individuals say that if we don't do the, if we don't do something about the inequality in, in the society, we're going to have a revolution. So here you are. We finally get to 3.2, and you're, you're ready to, you know, to get all nervous about four percent because of the slight inflation of my cut. It's good that we did three point. Some people are I love celebrating three point two. I love That's really going to hurt well. uh, margins already. No, not a three point two. But it's got to be wage push, doesn't it? If it's just wage and there's no push, then then the, you don't have to. Co correct, and that's been going on for a couple of years Where now. Where will it's we not a see it though? Wouldn't we, wouldn't we see it in in euro yields eventually or Japanese? Look how long Japan. Forever. Been, how long would you have been worried about inflation? Yeah, in Japan? Exactly, exactly. Are you right. sure that that's the biggest concern already? Is that it? 
It, well, look, I can come up with a lot of others. The, the borrowing money at, at zero. Right. Um, oh, and, oh, I agree that, with that's that. A, I know. That's a, a big problem. Because we problem. can't raise rates. There's, there's another so nuance out. here we haven't, we haven't talked about. The U.S. consumer is largely what we're talking about. is in great shape. That's 70 plus percent of the U.S. economy. It's not 70 percent of the U.S. stock market. It's less than half. The U.S. stock market is much more manufacturing oriented. You won't and even get us back to the old highs. Right. What happened to you? You don't even want us going back to the old <laughs> I'll highs. I'll take it. What, I'm huh? happy to be wrong and take note in 29.50. Whether we're talking about the relationship between wage growth and overall inflation and Fed policy or not, I think the bottom line is you, you don't get liberated from the late cycle push pull dynamic that we've been in for a year, right? right? So all the good stuff that's happening brings kind of the end point into sight. Let that's me. right. And that's and not the, to say the, it's correct, the but growth, that's the way the market treats it. The growth slowdown we've seen several times this cycle has always led to, oh, we're going to do it again yeah. and go back to double digit right. earnings growth. I don't know that that's possible this time, given what you just said. We're in later stages. But they Wait, don't die of old age. Yeah, nope, don't. that they don't.